People ask me, uh, do you think it's worth it to uh, pay the extra money, what is it, $200 or so, to upgrade to 6.5? Uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of new features. Is it really worth the extra money? And I would say absolutely, yes. Um, just even for the improvements that have been made to the ability to enhance your footage in the 10-bit color space, that feature alone is definitely worth the $200 that you spend uh, to uh, have that extra ability. And uh, in this video tutorial, we're going to show you how you can uh, make those enhancements. If you have not already watched this, I highly recommend you taking a look at a video, a free video that is available at uh, the Grass Valley website. Uh, just go to Grass Valley and go to the EDIUS Pro 6.5 section. And uh, here in this section, um, you will see several videos that you can take a look at for free that show the improvements or the new features of, of 6.5 and one of them in particular um, shows, this one by Matthew Scott, uh, shows how you can improve your footage using the 10-bit color space specifically. So if you have not taken a look at that one, I highly recommend uh, taking the time to see how Matt Scott uses the new features of 6.5 to improve his footage. But we'd like to take the time just to uh, maybe add a couple of things that uh, might not have been mentioned in that video tutorial about how you can improve your footage in um, you know the daily course of editing. Another thing that people ask is, uh, should I 10-bit or should I not 10-bit? You know, should I do my projects in the 8-bit color space or should I just do all my projects now in the 10-bit color space? Now, the answer to that question really depends on several things. When you move to the 10-bit color space, your processing speed, or shall we say, the, the ability to play things in real time. Let's say you have several layers going on your timeline and you want to uh, play everything in real time. Well, that ability to play in real time is going to be decreased if you move to the 10-bit color space. Uh, some of the power editors that have measured this uh, tell us that uh, you decrease your ability for real time by about 25%. So if you are working on a slower computer, maybe an older laptop, and uh, you try and edit a project in the 10-bit color space, and you're noticing that uh, things are kind of stuttering along, especially if you have a couple of layers and they're not able to play in real time, well, you might want to switch your settings back to the 8-bit settings, especially for the edit itself. And maybe just before you export your video, you might want to change your settings to 10-bit so that uh, you can uh, take advantage of the extra abilities that you have in the 10-bit color space to fine-tune some of your clips. But for the most part, you could do all of your edits still in the 8-bit uh, mode. But I wanted to show you what you could do if you have a couple of problem clips. For example, the other day I was out with my DSLR camera uh, when the family was picking cherries and uh, just thought I'd get a couple of shots in the field while everybody else was picking. Well, I got the footage home and as I looked at it, I realized that I was getting some banding uh, here in the out of focus section. Just like Matthew Scott described in his video, I'm, s I'm seeing this color banding. It may not show up very clearly uh, in this small screen. Let's uh, bring it to full screen. And if you look in this section here, you can see uh, this ugly banding that is taking place. And uh, it's maybe not too bad, maybe it's passable, but if you try and do any color enhancement to the image, uh, color processing, like this shot here is perhaps just a little overexposed, and if we wanted to uh, go to our color correction tools of EDIUS and do some color correction, let's put some, well, maybe with the uh, color balance, let's uh, bring down the exposure a little bit, and maybe with the YUV curve, bring that down a little bit. We can start to see that banding really show up as you uh, begin to try and process this image. One of the disadvantages of working with a DSLR camera is that uh, by default you are getting a highly compressed video file and you know there's just not a whole lot you can do. It's basically a presentation format. Uh, you shoot it and maybe you can get away with editing it on one timeline, but if you start doing any processing with your uh, footage, 
you're going to run into problems unless you can promote that clip to a, a file format that is more robust and as we'll show you in a minute to promote it to a 10-bit color space. Okay, so we've added some color correction. Let's take a look at uh, the banding and how it's been affected. Let's uh, go back to our full screen preview here. And uh, now as we play our shot, we can see that uh, any color correction that you do really uh, adds to this problem of color banding. So what to do? Well, here's where you can really take advantage of your ability to quickly change your project settings from an 8-bit environment to a 10-bit color space environment. And you do that just by going to project settings, uh, change current project settings, and go down here and change this from 8-bit to 10-bit. Hit OK. And even though it may not look like much has changed, as you look more carefully at your footage, and let's maybe go full screen again, we'll see that, uh, yeah, even though there's still a little bit of a noisy problem there, most all of the color banding has disappeared, especially uh, when you compare the still shots. So now what you can do is, uh, first of all, maybe do, do a little bit more fine-tuning to your shot using your color correction filters. We can just bring that down just a little bit more until you get what you want. And then let's uh, save this clip. Let's do an in and out on it to a uh, much more robust file format. Let's save it, uh, since we're working in EDIUS, let's save it to the Grass Valley. And because we're in the 10-bit color space, we'll choose the Grass Valley HQX. And uh, let's do an export on that. And once your file has uh, finished saving, let's go back and change our project settings uh, to the 8-bit color space again. 10-bit to 8-bit, hit OK. So now we're back in our 8-bit color space. Uh, the clip that's on the timeline there is still showing all that nasty color banding. But down here um, is the, the file, the 10-bit file that we saved. You know, check out the properties. This is the Grass Valley HQX AVI file. And some people may wonder, will this 10-bit file that we just created play nicely on my 8-bit project? Well, let's try it out and see. Place it down on our 8-bit project, and sure enough, it plays fine. And as we compare the two in full screen, we can see the difference. This is the old footage before we did any enhancement. You can see all this nasty color banding showing up here. And now this is the improved footage. There's been a big improvement in the nasty color banding that was showing up from the, uh, the native footage. And I like the, the improvements that uh, I'm able to do with my footage so much that I'm actually going through all of the HD footage that I've shot over the last five years um, and reprocessing it in this 10-bit color space for the stock footage that I sell. For example, if you're like me, in the early days of high-definition video, you may have purchased a camera and used a camera with the factory settings and ended up with some of this kind of footage that's all washed out, just really doesn't look that great at all. Well, using the 10-bit color space of EDIA 6.5, uh, I'm now able to go through all of this otherwise drab footage and uh, make some wonderful enhancements to it. As uh, many of you probably know, I for many years have been uh, selling stock footage from my various shoots around the world uh, on a wonderful website called Pond5. Many of you have probably contributed to Pond5 or, or have purchased from Pond5. They're very big in the stock industry. Well, uh, more and more today, editors and producers are wanting footage in a, in a more robust file format than what Pond5 and some of these other stock agencies are willing to store on their servers. They like you to have a, a fairly compressed file. And uh, so what I'm doing is uh, going through all of my footage, re-encoding it to the 10-bit color space, and this time not only promoting my footage on Pond5, but I'm also creating uh, my own 
stock video website called Worldview Videos. And here at Worldview Videos, I'm going to be giving editors and producers the opportunity to request high quality AVI files uh, for their projects rather than have to rely on these very highly compressed files that most stock agencies are going with these days. And so uh, that's kind of the project that I'm working on right now is going through all of my stock footage and uh, promoting it to the 10-bit color space and then saving it to 10-bit Grass Valley Codex. And uh, so that may be of interest to some of you who are working with Edius uh, to know that there's a, a stock footage company out there that is uh, making available high quality AVI files in the Grass Valley Codex. So keep that in mind and I will keep you posted as to my progress on, on this project. But for now, I believe that does it for enhancing your footage with Edius 6.5.